Hi, I'm Ian from Black Star Amplification. Uh, I'm the managing director and one of the founders, along with Paul. I'm Paul Hayhoe, brand director and co founder. So, St. James is our hot new product line, and we wanted to, a name that encompassed the personality and what it was all about. And the conversation actually happened at Von Elrod's Beer and Sausage Emporium in Nashville, and we were talking about some of the cool areas in Northampton, UK, where we're based. And the St. James area of Northampton's where our rugby team comes from, which is a really, it's the only really successful sporting team we have in Northampton. I probably shouldn't say that. Um, so it's that area is where the rugby ground is. There's also um, a really huge lift test tower, which is like the most iconic building in Northampton. So it felt like a really natural thing. And of course, within our industry, there's tons and tons of really cool Jameses and Jims and Jimmies. In fact, we worked for one of the most famous Jims in our industry, Jim Marshall. So it was, again, it's part of Ian and I's personal history, as well as a really cool area of Northamptonshire, not to mention Jimi Hendrix, Jimmy Page, ad infinitum. It's a rock and roll cool name. So there's an awful lot of innovation in this product. So it's been designed really from the ground up and hence it's been a really long project. Um, and we've had, making the product lightweight, had a lot of challenges um, and things, we've done things that I've never been done before. We've got a patent um, around that product, around the product, um, which encapsulates the lightweight, but also a lot of the stuff to do with cab rig and the way that we have implemented the dummy load. So I'd say it's taken probably over between two and a half and three years, which is long, possibly the longest project we've ever done. Um, and a lot of it's been to do with the fine tuning towards the end as well, because we wanted the product to be absolutely perfect for us we see this as a game-changing product that is you know gonna make people's lives a lot easier having that lightweight aspect to the product is so important um it's something that we've been asked for time and time again so yeah it's it's um because there's so much new in it every time we do something new that's when it takes longer and because there's more new stuff in it that's why it took so long to develop because i think it's interesting that there were um Two things that happened which made this product so great and such a step forward for us. One side was the this the sort of form factor and the lightweightness and all the great, you know, sort of connectivity we've got in there. The other bit was the Sonic Journey. The Sonic Journey was very, very different than the than what we'd done before. We really went back in many ways. To, I wouldn't say back to the drawing board, the schematics, the circuits are very, in some ways, have a lot of similarity right back to the lineage, right back to Series 1. But we went into really forensic detail in terms of the references that we'd identified that we wanted to put into these, the Sonic references that we wanted to put into the two amps. We went into an extreme amount of detail. So we went back to um, identifying some really excellent Sonic references. Black Star references, also some vintage uh, valve amps from other manufacturers, the obvious ones. But the, the units that we got were really special. And there were things about them that we really liked. And then, <coughs> the so we, so we wanted the um, EL34 version to be the ultimate pedal platform, really, and have everything you'd want from a clean or crunch amp. Um, so that involved us looking at a lot of American amps, looking at a lot of British amps, and also what we'd done before. But the, the secret was putting that all into one package that was cohesive, because get a UK thing and the US thing going, and to make it work all together as a package, was that was the, the real journey that we went on. And then on the... 6L6 version, we wanted that really beautiful sort of American clean sound, but we wanted a high gain 6L6 overdrive, but we wanted to go beyond probably what we'd done before. You know, since Series 1, those were probably designed nearly 15 years ago, things have moved on somewhat, so there's a little bit more of an aggressive edge to them. Uh, they're very, very dynamic, um, react very well to 
to the plane of touch. They do all the sort of detuned stuff very well. Even though it's a 50 watt amp, it holds together extremely well. But again, it was how do you get the most pristine American clean sound in the same amp as a really, you know, high gain, you know, like ultimately kick ass distortion sound and put it all together. So that was where the that was where the real challenge was. And that's where, you know, how the journey was different. But it's brilliant for us because we don't want to do the same thing over and over and again. And we, I tell you, it's also an amazing thing that we get to the end of this journey and we say, ah, we've done it. But of course, we've never done it completely because next time there's always more we can do. So we always learn. And obviously, the, the main thing that we've used all the way through is the, the AB box. So, you know, we've been, we've been doing an awful lot of critical listening against our references. We're talking hundreds of hours, hundreds and hundreds of hours. Sometimes I've had to go away and come back to it because, you know, you listen to something for um, an extended period, then you can, your hearing can, after an hour or two, can start to become a little bit difficult to discern the direction. So we've done a lot of that. Um, and we've used lots of different guitar players as well. So, yes, that's, that's what we were trying to do. Ultimate pedal platform and get that really amazing clean sound with the high gain stuff in the same amp. Yeah, so we felt that to um, be able to deliver the whole thing from that pedals platform right through to the high gain stuff, really, we needed two models. Um, because it's a, it's a fact, we could maybe put the, all these, these things to one amp. It would have made the product too complicated, Something that we really wanted from St. James was really s real simplicity, plug in and play, you can find your sound. So that was a, that was a really important thing. Um, and we didn't want to compromise, you know, when we, guitarists sometimes, something we found is a guitarist who, who want a pedals platform. They want low gain, they want crunch. The fact that it has a high gain channel on it actually puts them off sometimes. We're, at, we're offering them more than they want and more than they need. So we, didn't, we, we were very, very careful about targeting the products to the use case and not giving people stuff that they didn't necessarily want. We wanted to keep it simple, but really, really focused, no compromise, pristine delivery of the sonic references that we're after, I think. So yeah, that's, that's why there's two amps effectively, is uh, you know, to keep it simple for people. Yeah, so... With St. James, we knew these were going to be really special amps, something that gives people something completely new, completely unique. There's never been an amp like these. And it was really important to us that the looks reflected every aspect of that. So we spent as many hours on the look and feel of these amps as we did on the sound in many ways. And the lit up logo, the illuminated logo, harks back the font and styling is to the very first products we did, the Artisan. So the font and styling goes right back to our earliest roots in terms of that boutique hand-wired heritage. We kept everything really super simple. Amazing tone, but approachable for any kind of guitarist. You can just walk up and dial into it straight away without any fear. Even though in some ways they're some of the most technically advanced valve amps ever produced. But for a user, you would never know that. You just walk up and it's as familiar as any historic valve amp you've ever seen. I think it's interesting that, again, I think there was kind of two parts of the journey, I think it's fair to say. So there was the technology involved with making the product lightweight. So that was like, initially, that was the goal. And I think the, the way that the, really the journey developed was that as we went forward, the, the cab rig part and the integrated inductive load kind of came along as part, almost like it was at first a secondary feature, mm. I'd say. Yeah. But actually, that's become as fundamental to the concept of St. James mm. as the fact it's lightweight. In fact, the way that we talk about this product, when we, when we talk about it to somebody who's never heard about it before, we describe everything it does, which is a lot. You know, it is the, it is the most um, advanced valve amp in the world with all the digital stuff that's in there, that's integrated completely sort of off the main valve circuit path. So it's a very, very pure analog circuit path, but you've got all this digital stuff as well. But we talk about 
all the great features, all the way that it delivers, the way it sounds. And then only at the end now, we say, hey, you know what? And it really doesn't weigh very much. You know, in a way, the main feature becomes like the icing on the cake because it's, a, it's the best amp we've ever done anyway without compromise. I think that's yeah. fair to say. I mean, it was something, as Ian said, at the start, it was a, these are going to be the lightest 50 watt valve amps in the world. But when we started showing them to artists and getting guitarists to plug in and play them, it was clear the first thing, like, wow, these look amazing. They plug in, wow, these sound amazing. It's like, this is really incredible. And then at the end, he's got, yeah, pick it up. And then it kind of blows their mind, that final piece of the puzzle. So it kind of, the whole concept, really, in terms of the focus, turned around for us. It's all about, all about the sound and the look and what they do and how they solve problems for guitarists, really. And the nice thing is you can actually pick it up in one hand and walk off with it. So, the, yeah, the, the use of an inductive load um, means that when the valve power amp is driving current into that load, the way the, the valves and the output transformer react with the load forms very, very important part of the, the tone generation, like the frequency response, but also the dynamic uh, feel. So if you only use a resistor, then you don't have any of that frequency de um, dependent feel and frequency response. So you can model that digitally, but what we've done is we've done a really accurate, low voltage, low power, um, inductive load, in resistors and inductors and capacitors built into the amplifier, which means that when you drive the current into that load in silent record mode, you get all the feel and all the frequency response attributes you would get with a cab in reality. So it isn't a model. Within the amp, you've got an actual reactive load, which very, very accurately re uh, represents what you'd have with a loudspeaker. Very cool. So you can drive the power stage, all the stages of the valves flat out without having to have a load on or a very low volume. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. The, the really clever thing um, that Paul Stevens did with this was um, we realised that to implement inductive load at fifty watts is going to be big. It's going to generate a lot of heat, um, and it's going to be heavy. Not in keeping with the concept of St James. So what Paul did, he, we already have amazing power reduction on this amp right down from 50 watts to 2 watts with an intermediate sort of sag feature. Um, so what, it do, what the amp does, and this is the bit that we're part of the main part of the patent, is that when you go into standby mode for silent recording, the power amp automatically switches itself down to 2 watts, which is the lower power mode, which means that you don't need a large inductive load. You need a, We can use a much smaller inductive load. The, the actual response is exactly the same. So there's no compromise there, but it just means that we can use a smaller one and it means that there's not so much heat and it's much lighter. And then that's what happens is, as I think Paul mentioned earlier, you can drive the power amp at full output um, and, that, and that's where the output for cab rig is taken. So not only do you get the preamp response, but you also get the most important, the Shangri-La, you get the valve power amp response as well. Super cool. Yeah, I, I think that's the, the amazing thing about the product is that there's so many different use cases for how this, this amp could be used. So, so for instance, for live work, you could use, use it as a standard amp into the lightweight cab. Sounds absolutely awesome. Mic it up exactly what rehearsals. You don't need to mic it up. It's way loud enough to play with a drummer. I tend to use it in two watts when I use it because it's... In a, in a small rehearsal environment, that's actually enough. Uh, club gig, you could use it mm -hmm. just as back, back line. But the really cool thing is that you could also use it for silent stage applications. You just you know click in standby, then you can go directly out of front of house. You can use a combination of cabs as well. So you can have, you know, you can have a combination of four by twelve or one by twelve, different mic up, you know, mic configurations, all that silent to yeah. front of house. The other thing as well, you can use pedals as well. Yeah which I think is a little bit different than, say, the other sort of uh, digital high-end floor-mounted devices, you know, Helix, Kempers, that sort of stuff. With this, you can get your 
pedal board that you love and that's the basis of your live sound, you turn up with that and you turn up, especially with the 34 head, that's all you need. You can go direct to front of head house, but you've got your pedal board set up as well, which I think is kind of unique um, as, a, as a concept. Really, really portable. Uh, it gives you the ultimate flexibility. Uh, I think probably as well, I bet the ultimate sound I would have thought is where you mic the cab up and you use cab rig live. I think that is a, the, the true pro setup because then you give the sound man the, the flexibility of you know a direct signal, but also on stage you can have a little bit of live out of a cab, which guitarists kind of like. And the really nice thing as well is you've got the USB out. So if that's your sound that you're using live and on a silent stage, when you're at home or in the studio and recording into a door, that's exactly the sound that you're getting as well. So you get that continuity of, you don't have to compromise anymore. Well, that's my live sound, that's my studio sound. It's the same kit that you can use in both applications. It's really yeah. cool. It's really fun for rehearsals as well, because you can, you can re if you've got the whole band using this stuff, that you can have a... a a totally si effectively a silent rehearsal and you record everything you know a very very high quality and uh which is a lot better than back in the day where i used to have a you know a little tape recorder in the corner of the rehearsal room you can actually yeah. get pretty good results just recording live with it now the um the way that we made the amp light there's, there's several things but the main uh function is the is the replacing the traditional um, main transformer which are incredibly heavy with an SMPS uh, switch mode power supply, um, which it, those sort of designs are using pretty much all consumer electronics. So whether it's a, your laptop or you know, your TV, they, they're in those. But you can't buy something off the shelf that would work for a valve amp. So that's you know a probably a couple of years it took us to design completely bespoke from scratch um, a, an SMPS that works and gives us the exact same dynamic feel as a traditional, um, you know, iron core mains transformer. So the power supply is not in the signal path, yeah? The power supply is what turns the valves on. And what happens in a normal valve amp is that as you draw current, then the power rails will, what we call, sag. So the more current you draw, effectively the less power you have because the, the voltage drops through the, through the power supply. And that's why Paul designed the SAG feature as well. So the SAG feature allows you to get, actually it's almost accentuated that valve SAG feel. It gives you much softer um, sort of, what can I say, more sort of saggy, hence the name. Feel so so the SMPS with the with the SAG exactly captures what you'd have from a traditional valve um, from a traditional mains transformer design. And the other yeah. extra benefit is the fact that you can plug it in anywhere in the world. So the yeah. fact that it is lightweight, you can take it for a fly gig, take it wherever, anywhere in the world, and you can plug it in. You don't need a variac, don't need to yeah. any special current concerns. Yeah, I think the most important thing is that there's nothing to be scared of with SMPS. Mm. So it's not like we've digitised the amp. All the SMPS is doing is providing the power supply voltages for the valves. It's not in the signal path at all. So it has all the advantages of being lightweight, universal power supply, can take it anywhere, helps us with noise. It keeps the noise down because you haven't got the mains hum. So it has those upsides, the downsides are none, because actually it's just better. So I think in, in the future, we may use this in more designs because it just makes a lot of sense. I think the reason why we haven't done it is because it's bloody difficult and it's taken us two years to do it. Sometimes the reason why people don't do stuff is because it's difficult. So we took the time and it's worked out extremely well. So we're really pleased to be able to offer that as a feature. So yeah, on the um, on both the amps actually, what we do with the with the tone stack is really interesting. So we've got what's called dual gang pots, which is like there's two resistive tracks sat behind each other, um, and they're a different set of values depending on which channel you're on. So we switch between two completely different tone stacks on the EL34. One is a kind of a traditionally more of a US tone stack, and the other is a more of a traditional 
UK tone stack. Um, but not only do we change effectively the values and the response of the tone stack, we also completely change its position in the preamp um, circuit as well. So on the, on the US side, it's kind of pre the gain. And on the UK side, it's post the gain, which is kind of, you know, that's, that's how those things are done. But it just means you get that extra level of flexibility and authenticity to the sound. But well, that's not all. <laughs> what we also do when we change the channels, which we change the output damping, so we change the feedback in the power amp at the same time. And this is one of those areas where we've gone into loads and loads of detail and listened. So we change not only the output damping, but we also change the presence and resonance circuits as well. So you're getting kind of a different resonant bottom end and that sort of fizzy top end as well so there's bit, there's an awful lot of detail that goes on with the 34 so i think people are going to be really surprised when they listen to the el 34 mm. um it's surprised in a good way because on the us side um you've got a very very pristine sounding kind of us clean sound and that's because it's the tone stack the position it is and we've really adjusted the damping in a way to get something that you might expect to have a 6L6 amp in a way. Mm. And then the third on, on the second channel, we actually take the feedback off the power amp. So it's actually got quite a chimey, um, sort of class A sound to the second channel. So you've got sort of a, on the 34, what, you, what you're gonna expect to hear is the best US sound, clean sound, very pristine clean sound you've ever heard. And then this really chimey sort of class A, it's kind of a hybrid between, I'd say, between a, a Marshall and a Vox done in a black style way, you could say, because it has all that kind of openness of and bell-like top end, you know, with the class A sort of sound. But then it's got a bit more of a, of a grind of a, of a Marshall, a vintage old Marshall as well. So that's what people, it's not exactly what you'd expect from a 34, but for... For pedals and for that sort of light crunchy sound, it's absolutely perfect and something new. Yeah. Really, really exciting. In terms, like in terms of the concept, I think in terms of, there was the lightweight aspect. There was all this other great stuff. But for us, it was about simplicity. You know, we kept going back to that simplicity, simplicity, simplicity. Guitarists want to just go up to product and understand it. And we spent a lot of time on the whiteboard taking features off. <laughs> because you know and, and that's that's hard for us yeah. <laughs> so for instance you'll you'll notice that on these products there is an isf and that's a, a tough decision for me and paul because we, we love that feature and it, it's really really great for guitarists but in this instance we wanted people just to be able to approach the product and really get their tone straight away and i think that's super important these are the the simplest most flexible amps we've ever made i think it's fair to say so in short I really hope that you go out and check out our new St. James amps. And all I'd ask you to do is approach it with an open mind. And you use these and not these when you're approaching these amps. And I know they look super sexy and it's tempting just to go, oh, fuck, they look great. I want to check it out. But it's all about sound. It's all about creating the tools for yourself. And it's true for St. James, but it's true for everything that we do at Blackstar. Yeah, we're really excited and... You know, we're confident that these amps are going to take things forward. People are going to find new tones and new ways to express themselves, which is what we are really passionate about. Let's keep moving things forward and make some new creative stuff happen.